Okay, welcome back. So now let's move to tutorial three. So in the previous two, we addressed convective and diffuse stir. So now let's put everything into action into the actual equations. So in this case, this is the, the, the lead driven cavity. Okay, very simple case. A Reynolds 100, we already solved this one. There is no turbulence, so there shouldn't be any reason not to have to get the wrong solution. Okay, but here we're going to add a little bit, a little twist, okay? So I'm going to show you what we're going to do, but remember, everything that we did previously, discretization, convective, Laplacian, time discretization, you can apply it here, okay? So what we're going to do that, this is the original mesh, a perfect mesh, so getting a solution here, there is no problem, but we're going to use this mesh. By no means, this is a good mesh, okay? So we just make it like this in purpose, just to show you, however, what is interesting, is that if you run check mesh, you will see that this mesh is okay. This mesh, it is in the limit of uh, what can be considered a good quality mesh, okay? Nevertheless, we're going to get a bad solution here. And see that here you have many things going on. So see that you have large aspect ratio or growth rate. So see the change from the small to large cells. Okay, so see a lot of excuses, no orthogonality, everything all together. Okay, and this is what usually you can get in industrial meshes, no? stuff like that. So we need to adjust our numerics to take into account that. So even if this is a bad mesh for computing grades and everything, by adjusting everything in the right way, you are going to see that we're going to get the right solution. So see here that we're sampling in the usual way in the middle of these two lines and see that by using different methods. So see that in this one, see that we're getting this method the, the, the solution, which is something that is convergent, but it's not okay. So we can do better. So after doing some modifications, see that now we get better, even in this mesh that is not very desirable. Okay, so now here we need, we need to focus our attention in everything, but particularly in this, it is the Laplacian discretization, the methods that we're going to use in the previous case. Also, divergence is important, okay? So it's the one, you can go linear win, but this case is no rain or so linear is okay. So this is not going to make such a large difference, okay? But then the important thing is that we need to do better, we need to increase the, the number of corrections to compute better approximations, okay? So here you have a little bit of explanation what we're going to do, okay? So you have this case located in the in this folder, no ortho cavity. You have your steps. You have different measures, but you can follow. You can run this. So we're going to do it, but then you can follow these steps and you can see what is happening. Okay. So important Laplacian screen. So all over your navigator stores equations and models, you have this. But then when you want to improve computation, it's clear to see that you increase that number of corrections. You are computing better approximations. Okay, so usually the criterion is that is your mesh quality is above 75, you put here limited 0 0.5, okay? So at the end you have this exercise, so I try to answer this and then we can discuss this during the Q&A session. So just to remind you something also about our loops. Okay, so in this case we can use the piso nita or piso eta, but the idea of increasing this these iterations here, see that you are computing better gradients in both cases, so always Look at this because many times this will solve your problem. So yeah, it will take longer to compute, okay? But you are solving your problem. You are getting a, a good solution. So let's work out in this case. So see that you have orthogonal mesh. We're not going to touch this one. We go to the Kirchner mesh, okay? Then we have a slightly orthogonal. This one we're going to do it later. So you go here, and you have the case ready to run. So let me run first. Wrong mesh. So you have run all, it's going to do everything, but I will do it in a sequential way. So run mesh, and see that it's doing the mesh, but also it's checking the mesh quality. And see that this is in the limit. So see that it's 76, the maximum orthogonality, and you only have it in seven phases. Okay, so it's not that bad. You can visualize this mesh. So let's see what we have here. Okay, well, when you check it visually, this is horrible. So this is what I say also when we study you know, the mesh, that this is the first test that you should be, that you should do. No, the mesh should be pleasant to the eye. This is not pleasant at all. But even though if you forget to check this one, 
to, to, to visualize the mesh is you, is, is you use check mesh. This is pretty much is telling you that this is not a that, that bad mesh. So you might be tempted to use a numerics that is for a mesh like this and it will diverge, you know? So let, let's check what we have here, okay? So let me open Control D, SV Skin, and SV Solution. So I will focus in SV Skins first. So see that what we have here, gradient, see that we're using this method, there is no problem, okay? But our in interest is this. So this is the first error that you see. So you see that this is a highly non-orthogonal mesh. See that we're using this method, okay? So this is wrong, okay? So this is why I'm telling you that this, never do this, never put this one, always put limited one, okay? Orthogonal is for perfect meshes with uniform spacing. So let me run this case, run solver. So by the way, you can use piece of phone or pimple phone, okay? So the first, let's use piece of phone, but pretty much will be the same. You know the looping, how, what it's doing. And see that is diverging. Okay, so if you want to see open from diverging, so see that almost immediately is diverging. So let's take a few steps because probably look at that, you, are, you have here the, the CFL number here. Um, for instance, some people may say, instead of, of, of focusing here, may, may go, go and say, okay, let me reduce the time step, okay? Because reducing the time step might control that CFL number. So let me reduce the time step an order of magnitude. And see that it still is diverging. It's still, this is a low CFL number, but it's diverging. This is, telling, this, is, this is telling you that your problem is somewhere else, okay? So we know that it's here in the pneumatic. So let's choose the right pneumatics now. So that's why my advice always, always put, the, put this dictionary's limited one. This is the right method that it will take into account that correction, okay? For the non-orthogonality of the measure. So now if I try to run, it's running a little bit longer, but it's still, it is diverging. And see that the divergence, now this is also why I like to plot minimum and maximum. You can plot here and you can see that how it's evolving the quantities and see that Eventually, pressure is the one that is exploding, going crazy. Okay, and then it diverge. Okay, so again, you might be tempted. Okay, let me reduce this and let's see what happens. So it appears that it's running, but if you check your minimum and maximum, since are small, but see that it's running, but it's a super small. CFL number. So this to arrive to the final time, it will take too long. So what if I want to run something faster? Okay, but still, if I try to run, it is diverging. Which, by the way, you let run this. Okay, later we're going to see. But you let run this solution with this time. So you are going to get a solution. But then when you plot the results, they are not very, very nice. So see that first we solve this problem. Okay. So always put here the numerics, then you can go ahead and say, okay, probably I want better gradients. Instead of using some sort of this, let me add limiters and you can go ahead, but your main problem is not this one here. So for instance, let me put now that method and it's still, okay, it's diverging in the same way. And also you can go ahead and change also divergence. And for us, this is not the main problem, okay? Okay, so should be here. I forgot to put this. So see that it, it is running, but look at the values of coolant and pressure. So this is even worse. When you put linear wind, okay, it's running, but see that you have crazy values, okay? So what we need to do now, okay? So always look at the first mesh quality and set up your pneumatics. So here you have your recipe and use this one. By the way, you have this keyword here, is skew corrected. This is to take into, into account excuseness. But honestly, I have tried it and I don't see much a difference. So I, I, I don't waste my time putting that, but you can do your, your own benchmark. So if you put something like this, now it will do the interpolation, but also will try to reduce the skewness. But I haven't found, I haven't seen any any large improvement, so I don't waste my time there. It's just focus there. But 
remember, besides the discretization, we also have these loops. So let's see what happens here. So let me go. So by putting this limited one, we're enabling this correction. Okay, but remember that this correction, it is an iterative method. Okay, so first you compute an approximation and then you need to get better approximations. So it makes sense that if you go here in SV solution and we're using the piece of solver, piece of loop, see that we have N correctors and then orthogonal correctors. Okay, so as you go here and increase this to two or three, let's see what happens. So now you are you are going to get better approximations now. But see that it run a little bit longer, it is diverging in a, in a different way. So by increasing that, you are modifying this here to get better approximation of the operations that you have there. But it still is not our solution. So now remember that you have another way to compute, uh, you have another loop. Okay, so see that you have this one this second loop here so this is your actual momentum corrector where you are going to get the velocity so as you increase this loop here you are going to get better velocities to compute this one and it's likely you are going to approximate everything better so let's go here and let's put two and two and off you go. So monitoring the solution, nothing strange. And see that you have two orthogonal correctors and two uh, 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 outer correctors, okay? So what is happening that these loops here, it is computing better approximation of all your quantities, all these interpolations, they're approximating better. So yes, it is a little bit more time consuming, but at the end of the day, you want an accurate, stable solution. So now that we have here, we're right final time, I will run sampling and voila. So in such an ugly mesh, look at that, we managed to get a very good solution, a very good agreement. And what I say that, for instance, let me put here non orthogonals to one and let's see the influence in this one. So let me rerun this one. Okay, so see that now you have only no, one orthogonal correctors. Okay, so see the influence here also when you look at the residuals, you can see the influence of that correction. So if there are, if there are difference, they, it has a, a difference. Okay, so see that we have there. And now we have a solution and sampling. And see that it didn't have much an effect. It was more important this one, outer correctors. So see that. Let me hide here. So see that if I put outer correctors to, whoops, to one, it diverged. So this is the important one. Okay, and this one didn't have a much an effect, but my advice is, this is my advice, when you have this kind of measure that the quality start to go more orthogonal quality, more than 75, and honestly, let me tell you this, I think you should use always this, this, these corrections, two and two, this is okay. It does, even if your measure is perfect, do that, okay? And I have to point out that, Probably you have used commercial software and commercial software have the tendency to always give a solution. They do give the solution always, but because they do a lot of corrections. Since that you cannot control, they are doing a lot of corrections. Here in OpenFund, you have those default values or recommended values. It's up to you to understand and to find that those values. And this is what we're doing here. Now we're giving you default values, default options. Okay. It's telling the numerics. So my advice, go ahead and put two, two. Okay. Don't think about that. Okay. Probably your mesh, the, me, the mesh quality is good. The orthogonality is less than 70, put one, but always do at least two, two outer correct, two, two correctors. Okay. So let's put it like this, two, two improve values okay so now let's do something else so see that now that we have this stable i can go like this look at that in increasing my delta t 
and by an order of magnitude so my CFL should be much larger okay and in theory I should be able to reach convergence faster okay but see that now still it is diverging okay so I solve my problem for a small CFL numbers okay? or CFL numbers that are around one okay but what happens if I want to go larger okay like in this case so there is nothing to do in SB scheme we have here already have this setup the right setup probably you can go and put 0 0.5 and actually it's better to put 0 0.5 here and let's see what happens with 0 0.5 okay it still is diverging in a different way okay centered on the, uh, and see that it's different yours but still diverging so we need to control something else and see that you are not going to to get that that extra accuracy or stability here the here in the linear solvers okay this is just crunching numbers okay so these default values are already okay we need to focus this in this in your pressure velocity coupling in this so let's say that well probably you might say let me increase the number of correction let me put three that will translate in better computation so see that still it is a virgin you put three and you might go a little bit greedy Wait, let me put five it's still it's running <laughs> an additional second but it still is a virgin so see that it's not always the solution not increasing this loop but it's strongly recommended we need to look now another thing that we haven't looked so far okay so if we go down this dictionary we haven't touched these options on the relaxation so remember we mentioned that this is the way how you control uh the iterative margin and steady solver so you need to use them but in our steady solvers you can use them and they have an influence like in this case so see that in this case when they are commented means that they are disabled so let's uncomment this and see that you now we're enabled on the relaxation so are you, we're making the matrix the linear system a little bit more diagonal so it's going to improve the convergence rate so now let me run with this one and see that now miraculous in a miraculous way it is running but it's not a miraculous way we know very well what is happening so now let me go and do the sampling and voila we have a solution it arrived but this solution is not okay so look at that now what i'm going to do let me change on the relaxation because and i will put here 0 0.9 okay so 0 0.9 so this dot asterisk means that every single variable field equation and variable apply on the relaxation so let's see what happens by reducing a little bit on the relaxation if it has an effect already saw that it has an effect okay but let's say that if we can get that accuracy that we want okay so if i go here run sampling okay it still see that we have that strange behavior okay but maybe if i go here let me go here three let's see if this one <clears throat> will help this solution oops okay let me run so see that now you have your three loops here okay the correctors and then the north zone corrector plus the under relaxation to add that extra stability so run sampling and see that now this one has an influence so see that it is important to do on the relaxation but it's also in this case now that we're going larger in the time step see that we need to add correction more correction so the time step here the cfl number seems to be small but it's, for this mesh is causing divergence okay and see that now that we have this and this numerics it is okay you can go here and let me say that let me put time step one second so now my cfl number will be something in the order of 30 or 40 whatever so let's see what happens see that now it's diverging in this case probably i am the limit of 
of the acceptable values so see that but see that you have a stability and the values here it makes sense pressure and velocity but you have a super large cfl number okay so just to reinforce now the what we talk about in the theory that they are unconditionally in, unconditionally stable so see that for this case this time step zero one is too large let me go zero five probably zero five would be on the limit no oops so see that social large time set, you start to, to miss you know, the physics, so that's why it's not recommended all the time to, to use large time sets, okay? You, you start to have this, this kind of problems, okay? So here, if I would recall, it was zero 01 already was given. Okay, so as you run with zero 01, but you see that you are getting a lot you are accelerating a lot your, your convergence rate now so you you need to add more loads but you are getting our convergence convergence speed and run sampling and this is it okay so i hope you got the idea pay attention to this loop but my advice is always go now for your mesh is two two okay and then is you are going to use large time steps okay it's not do not increase this okay too much move away from the from, from the metal so we're using the piece so the piece is, is the pure piece so is recommended to use when you have uh, uh <clears throat> it's non-iterative but when you have a small it's a, a small cfl number so cfl number is in the order of, of one five no more than five is you want to use larger cfl number it's better to think about the pimple loop okay and remember that your pimple loop or the piece on it, uh, iterative is this now you can do this external loop and so let's change to now to that method so see that here you have the options okay so let me go back here to the original options and now we are going to focus in this one okay so see that if you put this one one it is equivalent to running the piece so my advice is always go for the pimple method okay do not use the piece so go for the pimple method and then in the in the pimple is you put outer correctors to one is equivalent to the piece so, and the other advantage of the pimple is that you can use i didn't put the auction here but you can use the auction adjustable time step so let me go ahead and copy that so see that you just need to to look for a tutorial where you know where you have those auctions and it's not this uh, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. so let me see in which case I'm using pimple so C23 so this case the words exceeding it's a nice one you have many variants so you just go there and check and you can get your auctions so see that you have these auctions you put it here and I will add the comment only for pimple okay and uh, bum, bum, bum. let me go back 101 and i was working here and here okay so i will put it to no so i will disable okay i don't want to use it i would want to rely here and the original one here was zero one okay so let's run with the pimple okay and also you let me change the the solver okay so see that we were using piso by the way at ecophone it is a piece of loop it use the piece of loop but remember that it doesn't have a, a, any modeling capabilities so let's go and let me run with the pimple so we're running now the pimple with this auction one two one okay and we have on the relaxation see that in this case previously in this case now we have this one with on the relaxation okay and we know that it will give uh a strange results okay so to add <clears throat> okay to add more stability look at that what i'm going to do is just increase this one to two okay so now when i run with these values whoops and look at also at our workflow see that basically when we do two what is this loop that you are controlling you are repeating everything here twice 
so all your quantities would be approximated better. So likely would have uh, a big influence in your solution. Let's see what happens. So clearly see here, one, two. So now it's pimple mode, iterative mode, and running, okay. So likely it's twice as slow, but, and now if they do the sampling, voila, problem solved, okay. And now using this one, okay, I also can do this following with. Let me go, control it, and put here an even larger tank. So let me put one second there, and let's run. Let's see if, if we get a solution. So see that now with one second, super fast, okay, and see that the values, the quantities are bounded, are okay. And as you run your sampling, okay, you have some problems, but now you manage to get it running. Previously, with one, it wasn't running. And in theory, you might get better results. You might improve a little bit, but you need to, to increase these loops, you no? Know? So, but see that the cost here, you no? Know, and why is a compromise? Some people want to get very fast outcomes, and to get fast outcomes means large time step. But to get your solution stable or to get accuracy, you need to increase the number of, of, of corrections that you are doing. And it might happen that the, all these corrections that you are adding are more time consuming than running the simulation with a smaller time step. So you need to evaluate that. So let's see that I'm going to do here and I'm going to put five, three, one, and let's see what happens. Okay. So here you see that you are doing five corrections, three corrections for the pressure. Okay. And if we run, say that it's getting better. Okay. The solution is improving. Okay. But I hope you get the idea that it makes no sense of increasing that much. We know that due to the fact that we have this time state that is very large. Okay. We're, we're using, we're losing some of, some of the physics. So, now I'll put here 20 outer correctors and you see all the corrections. And sometimes in some tutorials in OpenFund you see 20. They put 20 because when you have a very severe physics, okay, things that go wrong very fast. And when you do all these corrections, you are improving everything, but it, it is too costly. Okay, it didn't have much an effect, the 20 corrections. So already this time step is too large, it's too much. Okay, one second. So let me go now and put it back to 0 0.5. Let me go 0 0.5. Okay, it still is very large. Okay, but we should get better results. So five corrections. Okay. Should arrive to 50 seconds. And there we are, 50 seconds. And sampling. And see that. Okay. And see that with 0 0.5, the time step. See that our CFL number is large, okay? It's 20, it's large. And that's all, okay? So see that you can control. Now it's important. Discretization is the scheme, but if the solution pay attention also to this, the pimple loot, the iterations that you are doing, but also relaxation factors are important. So let me give you now the final recipe here. So. For SB scheme, we already studied, okay? But according to the quality of the mesh, you will need to adjust that. But my advice is always go, go here, okay? And let me add it. So if you have a good mesh, a good mesh, by a good mesh, I mean a mesh where you have uh, the non orthogonality is less than 75, you can go and use this one, limited one. But if your non orthogonality is more than 75, or let's say better, more than 70, use this. 0.5 okay so this is my 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 big advice okay well, let me add here another note okay okay then here you know what is happening so in this case there is no need to go for the linear win but let's run again with linear win so remember previously it was an strange behavior let's see what happens now so we we should be okay the solution Okay, so it's running all those loops there and 
okay and i go gear at the sampling and see that that is okay not a big deal not a biggie okay then the gradients also gradients are very important okay so you can add limiters okay in this case limiters might have a, an influence so let me add here okay so i just driving you to the right setup so this one like this okay then as you want to do it in a select way so look at that gradients are limited linear win gauss linear limited zero five okay so this is recommended this is already good here backward you can go older no problem and that can give you more stability okay and then when you go to sb solutions play okay this nothing to do this is just crunching numbers standard way to resolve the inner system so maybe there are some solvers that are better than others so probably here is better to use this one so let me uncomment that one but then remember these options okay the loops very important and that's the one that is going to give you a stability so in this case for large if you want to go for with for with large uh, cfl number usually more than five it's better to use pimple do not use piso and my advice always go with solvers that support the pimple the pimple uh skin okay and here you can go this combination i think is is fine for every problem two three one okay two outer correctors three correctors and one orthogonal corrector this is okay for 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 moderate cases, if you have severe cases, we, you have seen that you can increase this number. So let's run with these parameters. Okay, so just to show you that if you forget to add a keyword or you put the wrong keyword, it, it will complain. So here, look at always remember to look at the screen. So it's telling you this is no, so I forgot to add an L there. And actually look at that, if you don't add an entry, and you run it is telling you that you are not discretizing gradients or whatever okay so if you are adding new equations and you forget to to add this in sb, SB skin when you try to run it's going to tell you what you are missing so just always read your your screen so see that you have here your two outer correctors okay the two <coughs> the the two orthogonal correctors and the three correctors there and remember, as you look at SV solution here, we have P final. So we're putting all the computational effort just in this one, where you have the the tight tolerance here. So 10 to the minus six, and there, then here you put it. So probably you can go like this, okay? So you put the very tight tolerance in the last one. And if we do the sampling, there you go. So see in this mesh that is not very nice, we managed to get very good results and just by controlling the, loop, the loops, okay, how to we choose this. And the final thing, okay, it is also remember to add on the relaxation. You can on the relax on a steady solvers, but do not use values too low because then you're going to lose time accuracy. So you can reduce this value, you can put stuff like 0 0.1, but then you go into a pseudo transient and you lose time accuracy. Okay, and you don't want to lose that. Okay, so let me run this and let's see what happens and see that it's diverging. Without under relaxation, it is diverging. So it's, it is important, very important. So always remember to add uh, under relaxation. Okay, so now we add under relaxation. Let me put a low value just to show you the fact that you start to lose time accuracy. Okay, so it's usually important when you have large CFL numbers. Now, in this case, we're running with large CFL numbers, so it will have an influence. So I, if I do my sampling, see that this is just, see that you are losing that time accuracy. So, so if you let it run in time, you eventually will converge, but this is not time accurate anymore. Okay, so you will be able to put very large uh, time steps here, but you are losing all that accuracy okay so let me go five see that is super fast okay 
However, then when you look at your solution, it, see that it's not evolving, it's very slowly moving. So this you need to let it run longer times. Okay, um, let me put 0 0.7. So I would say that the limit probably is 0 0.7. It's still, it doesn't have a strong influence, but less than 0 0.7, you start to lose that accuracy. And if I put 0 0.9, Okay. Well, sample. See the effect. Okay. So zero nine, kind of is see that it's converging, but it's a little bit oscillatory. It is ugly. It will be difficult to make it converge. This this case with such a large time step. You know, it's a time step of. For a CFL of 200, okay, it will be difficult. You need probably you can make it converge, but you are going to need a, a much finer mesh, okay. So let's end this one. Let's wrap it here. Let me go to the original ones and just to revisit here. So this doesn't matter what you put here. No, it's here. You see, icofin doesn't matter, okay. So also you have the standard functional object so my advice is what you are seeing here okay also you can go here and use instead of backward maybe you can also get some stability using the uh, Krant Nicholson so let me go here okay so see that you misspell something you get the the auction so Put it here and Craig Nicholson use this coefficient. So if you put it to zero, it would be equivalent to Euler. Okay, so maybe can give you better accuracy. So let's see what happens if I go. Let me go one. Okay, this is okay. Zero nine. Okay, so let's run with this one and we have two three. Okay, so let's run with this one. Okay, and sampling. I see that it's not it's not nice. Okay, it wasn't it wasn't a big improvement. Two, three, one. Okay. By the way, also we can go. My advice also is enable consistent. Okay, the def by default it's not enabled, so always go for the consistent formulation that that one can give you more stability and better accuracy so let's see what happens if i enable the consistent so see that now okay so see this the big difference between using the simple normal and the consistent so now with the consistent you are getting uh better results and if i'm not mistaken i might go here probably let me put it to five see that it converts super fast and now so you do the sampling see that you are getting there but see that you are losing too much information because you have a super large time step okay so this time set is for 200 the cfl number okay and this is the final trick that you have okay that go also for advice use all, always this pimple loop use the consistent formulation always on the relax do not add too much and 0 0.9 this this is okay for on a steady solver for a steady you might need to use lower value so put it like this and use this loop 231 is my recommended loop if you are having problems increase this one but do not use more than 10 okay so if you are still having problems with more with, with something about 10 or probably five it is better to reduce your time step because this it will start to become too expensive as you see there that you are doing more iteration so it's likely that it will be more time consuming okay so this is my advice to set up uh to set up this case okay so i hope you got the idea and remember this because when you go into your cases always you will solve your problems in this way okay so let me add some comments here so Okay, so these are personal comments. Okay, so let me go back to the original setup was like this. It's just to show you like this, like this. So if you try to run like this, it will diverge 
immediately okay you have it there divergent and so you reduce your time instead it will converge nicely okay but see that it's iterating more so usually reducing time step is a good solution you want to go larger with time step you have seen that you will need to increase a little bit these iterations to get uh, more accuracy okay so see that this is very very time consuming by the way you can change this while running now so let me go like this one 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 and see that it changes one 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 and now it's diverging okay after running okay and run solver also let me go back to the piece of solver so i just set in here the case to the original one so when you receive these tutorials you you are going to to have this one and i hope you will be able to reproduce this result okay so orthogonal orthogonal just put here linear this one was like this okay so this is okay and here it was like this then we go sv solution so this was okay p so one one okay two three one okay this is okay and yeah we are back to the original setup so diverging okay perfect and okay so that being said okay let me see here a little bit that i'm probably missing something okay time instead and showing up there and this uh, so now that we have this solution okay let me clean here Okay, and we play around with all these options. Let's move to the next case, okay, which is this one. This is a, a slightly non-orthogonal mesh, okay, and this is in, in steam one, okay, so, but you should be able, okay, to see what is happening very easily. So if I run check mesh, so see that in theory this mesh is perfect. This is a very good mesh. And let me visualize the mesh. So see the non-orthogonality 47, so, this is a good mesh. So while I did in this one, I added this. Now this effect here, and this is just adding some cool, some no orthogonality and excuseness. Okay. So it's still, this is a good mesh and visually is okay, but numerically speaking, it still is giving problems. So if I go here and let me run solver. Okay. And then I do sampling see that it's giving problem. It seems that it's okay, but it's not okay. So see that there is some difference here, a different here, and see here, there is a different there, okay? So be careful also that this line here, that it's not okay. Now this is for the reference, but it should be something like this. So this is not okay. So let's see what is the problem, okay? So now you, you can have an idea. So see that there is some degree of no orthogonality in the mesh. So let's go into SB skin and see what method do we have and see that we have a problem there. We're using an orthogonal method that is for uniform spaces meshes with orthogonality, no orthogonality equal to zero. Okay, so this is the first problem and let's run now using this new formulation. Unlikely we're going to get uh, an improvement on the solution. Okay, now sampling and see that much better. Okay, by just adding the limited method, remember that you are enabling this correction. In orthogonal is doing this, and this is back to approximate gradients in no orthogonal measure. So now you're enabling this, and there you go. See the importance of using the right numerics. So always always have it like this okay don't, don't even think i'm putting put in number two and i always that have it like this and now that you have that okay you can go and play with this action so for instance if you want to go with larger time step remember that you need to enable the pimple corrections and everything and see that in this case we don't need to do you now the two corrections in the previous one so let me rerun here like this OK, 
case sampling and see that that is okay so in the previous case you, you in the one the Kershaw mesh this one you put it to two in this case that good quality meshes you need to go that high but my advice okay first of all you need to do at least one of these correctors you put zero that is wrong you need to do at least one but here you can put it to zero but my advice is always at least always do one no orthogonal correctors even if you have a good mesh also my advice is enable this uh under relaxation so put it to 0 0.9 like like in the previous case so let me adjust that for you here so i go here and let me put it here and boom 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 okay my advice always at this one okay always and put it 0 0.9 is okay then also let me add the pimple loop here that we don't have it so let me, i just making the dictionary similar okay put this loop here that we didn't have it so now when you put this one you change the solver and you can go and use a larger time step because the piece is likely you not know, you you saw that and i will run it here that is you go with the piece so Okay, let me go back here. I, I, I. And let me go here and use. Uh, oh, I forgot. Here, let me go also get get it here. Control D. Let me get this auction here. Let me add it here at the bottom. It's not that I'm going to use it, but. Okay, so let me go here. and put a time set of, of one okay so if i go here solver okay and let's see what happens so see that it's not a very nice solution okay it's running we have some accuracy problems so it was super fast but now what we need to do is just to adjust this, okay? So we have seen the SB skins, we have nothing else to do, okay? Now let me go here. And what we can do is, for instance, I can enable the consistent formulation. And this should be enough. Let's see if this one is already doing the trick to get a good solution, okay? So you run with the consistent formulation and do the sampling and no it's giving problems so see that the piece is not okay here so let's sh change sol solver and now let me go here and let me add it here so always save your log files pimple phone okay and let's run with this one okay um, bam, 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 bam. so you need to define so let me go here we need to define you final okay so let me go like this okay so this is your some macro expansion and regex syntax that you can use in open phone and sampling and see that now the pimple is working so be careful the piso okay it is recommended okay to have a cfl less than five more than five is going to give you problems okay so if you want to go with very large time step use pimple and increase the loops here okay so if you put it to one here it is equivalent to to piso okay so just to show you that if i run see that at the beginning See that at the beginning will tell you that it's running in piso mode. Okay, it's not giving any more that message, but it's running in piso mode. Okay, so you do the sampling. Okay, mm, it's half an improvement. So let's see. So 
And it says that it was doing some other correction. So if I go like this, let me go like this and and zero nine one one. Oh, okay, I, I had I had three. I had three here. Okay, that was a problem. Ah, bada bam bam. Mm -hmm. Sampling. Hmm, hmm. Still is running, so it appears that it's doing another correction. Okay. Oh, poor, okay. Probably it's also the the consistent here. So yes, if I disable that consistent. Now it should get that other behavior. Okay, say that there. Okay, so see the importance, the, the consistent. Okay, that you can also add consistent formulation to the piece. So by the way, okay. So this is all for this tutorial. Okay, so I hope you got the idea. Okay, advice you have it here. How to set up everything. Be careful. Use always the pimple if you want to use lar large time step. Okay, and that's all. So in the next tutorial, we're going to do something similar, but now we're going to have chalk wave. Okay, so, okay, full Navier stock sequential, but with some chalk wave, but we're going to work it out in the same way to get the solution, or the right value. So thank you for your attention. See you next videos. Bye.